Hi, I'm John Nettleton, the Chief Systems Architect for Solidron, and I'm here to announce to you our new product, Honeycomb. Well, this isn't really Honeycomb. Let me show you what Honeycomb really is. And here is our Honeycomb Mini ITX carrier for our LX2160A CEX7 Com Express module revision 1.4. This ComExpress module features NXP's LX2160A system on a chip. Not only is this a powerful chip with 16 Cortex A72 cores, but it also features dual memory controllers at DDR3200 speeds up to 64 gigabytes. It supports both ECC and non-ECC variants. On the ComExpress module, we also have 64 megabytes of SBI flash and 64 gigabytes of onboard EMMC 5.1. We have the boot selectors here that allow you to choose from booting between SDHC, EMMC, SBI, and I2C flash. The ComExpress module is fitted to our Honeycomb Mini ITX carrier. In the Mini ITX form factor, it carries all the expected features. A 24-pin power header, three PWM fan headers, a standard front panel header that has power, reset, and hard drive LED, a USB 2 internal header, and a USB 3 internal header. We also have two USB 3 ports on the rear, an SDHC port, micro USB UART, and a micro USB header to the onboard STM32F microcontroller. One of the benefits of the LX2160A is its high speed networking throughput. Besides the standard one gigabit per second ethernet jack, we also have a quad SFP plus port that features up to four 10 gigabit per second connections. For additional connectivity, we also have a PCI 3X8 port that's open-ended, so it will take an X16 slot. We have an M.2 X4 for your NVMe needs. For additional storage, we also have four SATA 3 ports. And that's the Honeycomb ITX. And now that I've told you about the Honeycomb ITX and ComExpress 7 module, why don't I take a look and show you what we've done here. This is just a standard off-the-shelf case. Red and black are kind of our thing. Why don't you come on over here and look inside and you can see exactly how we've set it up. Basically, you have a standard PC configuration. We have our system on a chip. We have our memory, storage, NVMe storage, and a GPU, a standard desktop workstation. So one of the questions we always get is why do we need ARM64 on the desktop? Well, for us, it started early 2019 when Linus Torvalds said that data ARM in the data centers was nev would never actually come to be because there were no developer workstations for ARM. And at the time, we had already been working with NXP with their new chip, and it just seemed like a perfect match for us. Uh, what are the benefits? Well, for us, there's multiple things. One is just being able to work natively on the ARM64 platform, as that is something we develop here. But additionally, the power requirements are so low. We're talking about, right now, a case that's running about 50 watts with no problems whatsoever. And additionally, because it runs so cool, we can also run small fans and make it as quiet as possible. One of the other questions we get is, why did we choose the Mini ITX form factor? And while we did look at other form factors like the Nuke for something smaller or even one of the larger ATX form factors, what we found is the micro ITX really fit a nice balance between what the system on a chip offers and the availability of the options you can use it for. Because we have high speed networking built into the system of a chip itself, we can bring out the 10 SFP plus ports and then and not use the PCIe expander header. So you can have a very small form factor mini ITX case that is no problem because the system on a chip itself is such low power and low heat. Additionally, if you want something and you want some expansion, you can put it in a standard workstation case, add a graphics card or another PCIe multimedia card if you prefer. 
And, on, and as you move up the scale, you can even put this in a 1RU and have two side by side and actually have quite a competent networking platform. So who is this board for? Well, first and foremost, we built this board for developers. We wanted to provide a platform based on the ARM64 that is capable enough to run as a true workstation. With 16 cores at 2 gigahertz, you get a nice wide breadth of parallel processing, as well as this up to 64 gigabytes of memory, plenty of RAM to do whatever you want. Compiling, developing, testing. We want developers having a platform that, where they can use ARM as their primary workstation. We really want them to get in there and push the open source community with a larger system on a chip that's capable of doing everything they want. Compiling software, running a normal desktop, um, working with whatever product they want. Especially with more and more cloud platforms like AWS moving towards the ARM infrastructure, we feel that by having a workstation where you can develop on locally, you can be more efficient when you're trying to push and utilize those resources in the, in the cloud. Additionally, the board also fits places where you want a lower power form factor, but a widely scalable platform. For instance, DevOps or perhaps um, a network administrator taking advantage of the high speed throughput. Because you have 16 cores, you can run a desktop and in the background have additional VMs or um, containers running, doing work while you're not slowed down in any way, shape, or form. And that's Honeycomb. Um, we're very excited about it. Please leave your comments below if you like. And additionally, look out for new videos where we show the Linux desktop running on it, as well as the work that we've done providing ACPI and SBSA compliance testing. You can find it at www.solid-run.com. Thanks.